to push Gordon back down the hill. Look out, Thomas! Cinders and ashes! Gordon and his freight cars rolled back faster and faster. Thomas chuffed back faster and faster. He slipped into a siding, and Gordon rolled round the bend. The giant snowball will surely miss us now. But Gordon was wrong. The giant snowball rolled down the track and crashed and bashed into Thomas. Help! Gordon saw Thomas and his car of firewood lifted high in the air and derailed. Now it was Thomas who looked like a giant snowball. Luckily, no one was hurt. Gordon felt terrible. I'm not strong, and I'm not the best. It's a disaster. Gordon steamed slowly to Thomas. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'll huff my hardest to help you. Gordon heaved and hauled. He pushed and puffed, but the snow was too heavy. The snow was too thick. Gordon could not chuff through it to help his friend. I'm not strong enough, Thomas. I'll find Rocky. He's stronger than me. Gordon found Rocky at Brendam Docks. Hello, Thomas. I'll have you back on the tracks in no time. Soon, Thomas was no longer a snowball. He was a bright blue engine again. Thank you, Rocky. Now I must deliver my firewood. I'm very late. The station masters will be waiting, and they'll be very cold. I'll help you, Thomas. What about your very important job? I delivered my freight cars to the docks. Now I can help you with your very important job. Thomas was happy to have his friends help. Thank you, Gordon. Thomas and Gordon chuffed cheerfully through the snow. And when they came to a hill, they always puffed around it. Together, Thomas and Gordon delivered the firewood to all the stations. The station masters were very pleased to see them. At last, Gordon and Thomas puffed home to Tidmouth Shed. They were tired, but they were happy to have been really useful. Gordon wished grandly. I have something very important to say. No engine is special, and every engine is best. Thomas and his friends whistled. They all agreed with Gordon. First, I must collect Annie and Clarabelle. Victor and Kevin were busy at work as Thomas chuffed into the Sodor Steamworks. Hello, Victor. I'm here to collect Annie and Clarabelle. I'm going to take the children to a special picnic story time in the sunshine. That's a wonderful idea, my friend. The children will like that. They always have their best time with you, Thomas. Thomas was pleased Victor and Kevin liked his idea. Later, Thomas huffed happily out of the steamworks with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas puffed proudly up to the library at the town hall. The children were waiting. They were very surprised to see Annie and Clarabelle instead of cars of storybooks. Today, I'm taking you to an extra special story time. It's a picnic story time in the sunshine. All aboard! <laughs> The children had never had a picnic story time. They thought it was a wonderful idea. Thomas blew his whistle and chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed towards the junction. This time, Thomas waited. Then, he took the branch line back to Farmer McCall's field. Thomas chuffed slowly and carefully up to Farmer McCall's field. Here we are, the picnic story time special. The children cheered. 
they could see all the different colored books in the field. They were very excited. This was the best story time ever. Thomas watched as the children ran onto the field. They each picked up a book, and their teacher began to read with them. This is a story, children, all about a little boy. A little boy who didn't like waiting. He didn't like waiting because he thought he'd miss out on all the good things. But then he found out that good things are worth waiting for. As the story began, Thomas looked at all the happy children. He smiled his biggest smile. The children's picnic story time really is worth waiting for. Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzled out. Thomas had burned all his coal chasing the runaway kite. Oh my! Oh no! I've run out of coal. Then the wind blew again. The kite flew high in the sky and was gone. I can't puff anymore. I can't chase the kite. I'm not the fastest engine on Sodor. I've broken my promise to the children, and I haven't delivered the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Thomas felt terrible. It's all my fault. Suddenly, Thomas heard an engine chuffing around the corner. It was Charlie. What's wrong, Thomas? I ran out of coal trying to chase the kite. I thought you were the fastest engine on Sodor. I'm not. I was silly to think I could catch the kite on my own. Will you help me, Charlie? Of course I will, Thomas. Charlie gave Thomas some of his coal. Soon, Thomas's firebox was burning brightly. Thank you, Charlie. I'm late. I must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Can you look for the kite, please? With all my huff and chuff, Thomas. So. Thomas puffed to Knapford with the winner's cup. On his way to Knapford, Thomas stopped at a junction. Percy, Emily, and Edward were waiting. You look sad, Thomas. I didn't catch Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. Will you all help me? Of course we will, Thomas. Right away. With no delay. Thomas's friends were happy to help him. And Thomas was happy to be helped. Thomas arrived at Knapford Station with the winner's cup. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren raced over. Hi, Thomas. They hoped Thomas had found their kite. I haven't found your kite, but all my friends are looking for it now. Come with me. So the children climbed cheerfully on board. Thomas puffed to a junction. Suddenly. The kite flew in front of Thomas. There's the kite. Emily, Percy, Edward, and Charlie chuffed to the junction. The kite danced between them. Then it caught its tail on the signal. Hooray! We've caught the kite. The engines tooted. The children cheered. <laughs> With the help of my friends, we caught the kite. And later that day, at the kite festival, Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite danced best of all, as the wind blew it high up in the sky. And Thomas smiled, and Warden pulled up to the tunnel. He could see steam. Who's hiding in there? Express coming through. Come on out. James didn't want to come out. He was sure Gordon would laugh at him. Then Thomas and Percy puffed up. What's happening? Who's in there? I don't know, but the express can't wait. James knew the engines were waiting for him, and so were the children. If I keep hiding, I'll be late to pick up the children, and they'll be late for their party. So, with a puff and a huff, James chuffed slowly out of the tunnel. He was very unhappy. James. <laughs> You're all <laughs> pink. What a funny color! <laughs> <laughs> I'd hide too if I was bright pink. James felt terrible. All the engines were laughing, but James knew what he had to do. 
I feel very silly, but I can't let the children down. James hurried to Maithway as fast as his pistons could pump. James saw Spencer at a junction. Spencer thought James looked very silly. <laughs> oh dear, James. Bright pink really isn't your color. <laughs> James didn't like this, but this time, even though he felt silly, he didn't hide. I mustn't be late for the children. Then James saw Henry passing by. <laughs> My word, you do look pink. But James didn't hide. He felt silly, but he didn't stop. Must collect the children. Must collect the children. James puffed towards Maithwaite. He could see the children waiting. I'm sure the children will laugh too. They will think I look very silly. And he steamed sadly onto the station. James pulled into Maithwaite. Sir Topham Hatt's granddaughter didn't laugh. And she didn't think James looked silly at all. She smiled. She was very excited and very happy. James, you're a pink engine. Pink is my favorite color. James couldn't believe it. Do you really like pink? I love pink, and so do all my friends. Look, pink, pink is our favorite color. James was so happy it made his boiler bubble. I'm a very lucky engine. James puffed proudly into the town hall, just in time for the party. The children laughed and clapped their hands. James, the bright pink engine, was the hero of a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak. Cranky raised the flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still Tiny Thomas. That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly, Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Bubbling boilers! Creaky Cranky is lifting me! Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and juddered. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no. Cranky's crane arm had broken. And it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, what are you doing up there? I'm sorry, sir. I was... You are causing confusion and delay. The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales, or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken, and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then Sir Topham Hatt looked at Cranky. And you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame to be as silly as a steamy. Soon, a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder, just as Spencer arrived. Dear, oh dear, Thomas, what a mess. Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer, but he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful, and he had to be really useful. Spencer, I need your help. You're very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me, Will you take the wood, the straw bales, and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm. Very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. 
shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McCall's farm. Farmer McCall was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples, and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McCall looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples, and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples, and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotter's. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw, and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McCall's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he whooshed. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McCall. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. Thank you, Farmer McCall. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly nighttime. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. <gasps> Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed. And he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers. Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Aw, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. Thomas was so happy. His axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. And crashing coals. Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Mind my shiny red paintwork. James was so upset, he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown all over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now he was covered from buffer to buffer in twigs, soot, and straw. Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. 
Sizzling Sodor! What has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor, and then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes! This is all my fault! No, boss! I mean, Thomas! I'm sure it's my fault! I'm sorry, boss! I did try to say, boss! No, Kevin. It's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor. I didn't listen to you. And I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited. And too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So, Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time, Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me <laughs> wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Oh. James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Anytime, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> laughed and laughed and... James is muddy already. I'm sure he'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for just one more puddle before the washdown. Here I come, James! Splash! 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 <laughs> and Thomas steamed away laughing. Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over James. And all over the ripe strawberries on his flatbed. Blistering boilers! These strawberries were for Alicia Botti's cakes! Now they're ruined! Thomas didn't know he had splashed James's strawberries. This is fun! Splish, splash, splosh! I'll soon need a wash! And Thomas puffed on happily. Thomas chuffed up to the next junction. Now it was getting late. I know there'll be a very big puddle along the track by the river. I'm sure I have time for one last puddle before the washdown. So Thomas took the left track that went along the river. Ahead of him was a very big puddle. My, this is the biggest puddle ever. Here I come. Splish, splash, splash. Then there was trouble. Muddy water flew high into the air and splooshed down all over Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas! Thomas screeched to a stop and reversed slowly. He saw that he had splish, splash, sploshed Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hatt. Cinders and ashes! Look what you've done to Miss Botti. She's soaked. Also, Thomas, I hear from the dairy manager that you ruined the flour and strawberries for Miss Botty's grand tea. This is a disaster. Thomas felt terrible. He tried to puff forward, but he couldn't. Oh, no. The big puddle had put out his firebox. This game isn't fun anymore. It's all gone wrong. Then... Thomas heard Rosie's whistle. Rosie, please help me. I've splish splash sploshed into trouble. Oh dear, Thomas. Of course I will. Don't worry.
Rosie heaved and huffed Thomas onto dry tracks. With my dry coal, Thomas, your boiler will soon be bubbling. Thank you, Rosie. Now, I can't go to collect Sir Topham Hatt and Alicia Body. Would you take my special for me? Of course I will. I'll go right away. Later, Thomas was once more steep. He applied his brakes. Thomas screeched and skidded. Sparks flew and tracks trembled. Toby didn't dare look. Phew. Thank you, Toby. Your whistle told me there was trouble ahead. Toby felt very proud. I'm pleased I used my three-chime steam whistle. It was even louder than my bell. Thomas was proud of his friend Toby. Together, with their whistles and wish, Toby and Thomas moved the cows from the track. Then, Toby remembered Lady Hat. Fizzling fireboxes. I've forgotten all about Lady Hat. She's waiting for me at Knapford. I must puff faster than Gordon to chuff there on time. Don't worry, Toby. I'll puff with you. We're sure to make it together. Thomas and Toby puffed and puffed toward Knapford Station. Suddenly, Sir Topham had arrived. He was very cross. Toby, Lady Hat waited for a very long time. Now Gordon is taking her home. Toby was upset. He knew he hadn't been a really useful engine. I'm sorry, sir. Then, Toby stopped. He saw something ahead. There's a fallen tree across the tracks. And Gordon is steaming straight towards it. Oh, no! Don't worry, sir. I know just what to do. Toby bubbled his boiler and pumped his pistons. He blew his three chimes steam whistle as loudly and as boomingly as he could. Gordon heard Toby's whistle. He applied his brakes and screeched to a halt. Toby, did you blow that whistle so loudly? Yes, I did. It was my new three-chime steam whistle. For a steam tram, you have a lot of puff. Thank you. Well done, Toby. Toby couldn't have felt more proud. Good job, Toby. Toby was back at the steamworks. His little bell was ready. It glistened and gleamed as if it were brand new. Toby was happy. Bye-bye, big new steam whistle. Victor and Kevin had heard the news that Toby had saved Thomas and Gordon. Well, Toby, my friend, it sounds as if you had a very busy day. Did you like the new three-chime steam whistle? It was very useful. You can keep it if you like, my friend. No, thank you. My bell is the best of all. <laughs> all alone, Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes, I haven't found a welcome present for Hero, and I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then his boiler bubbled, and his wheels whirred. Hello, Hero. Goodbye, Hero and Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McColl's. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvelous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James, and Henry were still at the quarry. You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present. A new glowing lamp. That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas steamed swiftly away to the steamworks. Kevin, 
please tell all the engines to race to Knapford for Hero's party? My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking, what about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special. Don't you think so, boss? Uh, Thomas? Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Thomas clickety-clacked down the track this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's welcome party is almost over. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find you a welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend, you must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all. And the most special present from Sodo. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right. And so did all his friends.